back and welcome to part 91 of my build log series of the Trometer 1200 scale model of the Titanic. Today I am doing finishing touches. So these are all the tiny little jobs that I either haven't got around to yet or um, little things that I had to leave to the end. Uh, just tiny little jobs that will finish off the model completely. So touching bits up with a paintbrush, adding a couple of extra decals here and there, uh, life rings, just straightening out a few railings where they may have gotten knocked or bumped that sort of thing. So over the course of the video I'll show all of these little jobs. Without any further ado, let's crack on. I've just added the security railings at the end of the runs of davits. Uh, so there is one there. Um, and these were used in any passenger areas just to secure the ends of the davits off from passengers. Because bear in mind, of course, that there would be cogs and screws, grease and stuff like that on these. Not the sort of things you want your passengers interacting with, really. So railings were used just to hide those off from the passengers. On the other side, I haven't fitted one yet. Now, do just note that these were not fitted everywhere. For example, they won't have been fitted here because this is the officer's promenade. Officers are considered competent and therefore don't need a railing to protect themselves from the lifeboats. There would have been a railing here because this is first class space, but similarly there wouldn't be a railing on the foremost davit for the same reason that this is the officer's promenade. Officers are considered aware of the risks and so don't need a railing. So these will actually only have been positioned here and here and then mirrored on the other side of the boat deck. Now these railings aren't actually included in any of the kits that I'm aware of, so what I'm doing is I'm actually using the photo etch that came with the Trumpeter model, and I'm just using bits of railing here and cutting them out into sections. Uh, and for the purposes of this, I think that's perfectly sufficient. So here you go, much like the process for fitting the main railings on the ship. Uh, forgive the hand in the way there, sorry. Um, I've just painted the bottom of the railing with a layer of CA glue uh, and then positioned it in place and held it until it was dry. Some other little bits, as you can see, I've now painted over where the magnets are embedded into the side of the model. And that is the same on the other side as well. Uh, and the other thing that I've now done is I have painted the heads of the magnets which are used to secure the rigging in place, just to give them that little bit more disguise. They're pretty small already. Uh, but just to disguise them that little bit more, I've just painted the heads so that they blend into the background that they sit into. Another little job, I've just added the little tread plates at the very base of the stairs. These are essentially sort of duck boards almost. You can see one over there. And also one over there. Um, these are essentially duck boards that were mounted at the foot of all of the stairs. Um, Another little job that I had waiting to do, so they are now in place throughout the model. Another little job is just fitting the brass surrounds for these deck lights. Uh, these were actually fitted earlier on in the build, but this was something I did very early on in the build, uh, and I didn't really fit them particularly well, so these have fallen off over time and I'm just replacing them here. The new frames do just make the holes for the deck lights look a little bit more respectable. Now the last little thing I'm doing here is I'm adding some more decals. So this is a set, as you can see, that you can get on Tinterweb, uh, and it's another sort of custom add-on, um, but there's a few things in here that I was particularly keen on getting. First is these, and these are um, the sort of maker's marks, which were used on the ventilators and other air extract and intakes on the ship. So I'll be adding those, uh, and then also, these things which are load markers for the cranes so even today on a crane you will see on any crane it'll it'll give you a bit of safety information on it one of which, one thing of which will be the maximum load and exactly this is what these say so you probably can't read them because they're too far away but it'll sort of say caution two point ton do not exceed this load or something words to that effect uh, and these decals will end up on the booms of the cranes now for obvious reasons access is tricky so I will be fitting these where I can, rather than everywhere. Um, happily though, in this situation, if I'm struggling to fit a decal, that usually also coincides with something which is fairly difficult to see. Um, so for example, this one, nice and accessible, I'll, um, I'll be able to fit a decal on there, no problem. Some of the ones that are in a bit more 
tight places, nooks and crannies, like here for example, I may have to give a miss. Um, so we'll do as much as we can. So as you can see, these decals are immensely small and they are incredibly tricky. It's very difficult to actually get them in place and then even to sort of remove tools without um, moving the decal and having to sort of rework. Um, but I'm doing my usual process, soaking the decal, uh, fitting it in place and then applying a layer of microset. So there you go, you can see one of the signs there. And if we move along, another one over there. Now these are slightly glossier than the uh, the matte white paint of the superstructure, but I actually quite like that because um, I would assume, and I'm not sure, but I would assume that these signs would have been enameled uh, metal, which has a bit of a sheen to it anyway. So I think that works pretty well. Another thing that I've added, or I'm in the process of adding, is these additional sacrificial anodes here on the aft side of the propeller wings. Uh, so I was unaware that these were here until I saw this rendering quite recently. So as you can see the port side is done, the starboard side is yet to be done uh, and I will get on with that now. So there we go, both of those sacrificial anodes are now painted on and in place. Right, so I've now added the life rings. Um, as far as I can tell, and do please correct me if I've missed any, but I've got four on the poop deck. In fact, I've got six on the poop deck. Four on the aft bridge, and then one on either side of the poop deck railings. Uh, there is two each on either side of the aft railings on B deck. As far as I'm aware, there weren't any on the boat deck, save for the four on the actual bridge. So I'll just zoom in so you can see a bit clearer, but there's one as the uh, the aft wall of the bridge turns, and then there was one perched on the aft end of the bridge wing's house, as you can see there. So that is all of the life rings. Now, contrary to popular belief, Titanic's life rings were plain white. Uh, they didn't say Titanic, they didn't say SS Titanic, didn't say RMS Titanic, didn't say Liverpool, they didn't have any red stripes on them or anything like that. They were just plain white, and so that is how I've recreated them on the model. Now I've also added the fire hydrants, there were quite a few of those, and I wanted to add them just because they sort of add a pop of a different colour, they're quite bright red. You can just see one there, forward of the hatch. And there's another one just hiding behind that winch there. Now these are scattered all over the place. I've put one down here in the well deck. Um, and the position of these hydrants is actually quite hard. Um, we don't have enough photographic evidence to say exactly where they all were, but we do have photographic evidence to sort of give us a clue. So for example, you know, there's a photo that shows there was a hydrant here and there you can just see it. So we can sort of logically assume there may well have been one on the other side, and indeed that's where I fitted one. Uh, the next one is here at the base of the fourth davit, um, and duplicated on the other side. The next one is here, right at the end of the run of davits, and there's the next. There's the next. So you can see they're sort of periodically spaced along the deck. There's another, there's another there, and there, and that's your lot on the boat deck. And then there's one right down here at the base of hatch number six, and then there's one each on the sides of the after bridge. So as I say, I like them just because they sort of add a pop of colour, they add a sort of spot of red. I mean, we're, uh, clearly we're on to very, very fine and fiddly detail, stuff that... I think even most Titanic aficionados probably would think, mm, is it worth adding? Um, but I did just quite like, I mean, you know, th th they are pretty indistinguishable for what they are, but I did just quite like the pop of red, which is why they've been added. Now, there's nothing in the KA or um, original Titanic model uh, for the fire hydrants. So what I did is I just went through all of my sort of bits of China 3D and my bits of KA models and just found some pieces that I thought looked 
reasonably enough like a sort of end of a pipe because that's all these will have been these will have been ends of pipes with attachments so that hoses can fit on uh, and then i painted them red and glued them in place and because they are so small you can get away with things being fairly sort of non-defined i mean there there again you know a photo will do this better but as you can see it's red it's a bit pointy it, it could well be a fire hydrant um that's the rationale i've gone for here now i've also added this bar that just connects the aft of the um boat deck up to the aftermast and i'm not entirely sure what this was used for but my assumption would be it was sort of electrical services and stuff going up into the mast uh, but if anyone can shed light on that, uh, much appreciated. Now, I'm adding some white paint to these pipes because apparently, in the era when Titanic sailed, these pipes would have been painted white up until the point they turned upwards onto the funnels themselves. Um, I had erroneously thought that these pipes were white star buff until they reached the joints in the pipework because that is what is shown on photos of Olympic later in her career. Um, but apparently um, this was a change that was made later on in Olympic's career. So when Titanic sailed, these pipes would have been white up until the point they turned up the funnel. So I'm just redressing that here. Nice and easy, uh, as you might expect. Just a very light bit of paint brushing with some white paint does the job nicely. So as you can imagine, sort of finishing something like this off is fairly tricky. So what I've been doing for a number of months is I've just been adding to this list of sort of snags. So things like, you know, officers' railings, uh, funnel stays, fire hydrants, did those today, uh, signage, filling on the bridge because I had a few little cracks I wanted to sort out. Uh, the starboard morse lamp had fallen off, so I needed to repair that. Just a list of things that needed to be completed. Uh, and as you can see, the last few things that were done have been completed. Uh, aft mast bar on the aft mast, and then of course the life rings. So the only thing left to do now really is to hide any glue whiting and then do a little general clean. And that's your lot. So by glue whiting, I mean this effect here. And this sometimes happens with CA glue where the glue dries a little bit too quickly and the vapors produced by it just sort of stain the surrounding area. But no matter, there is a very simple means of fixing this. Now I did this one off camera, but what I've done is I've just painted on a layer of varnish. Be careful you use the right varnish. Because these are my funnels, I'd used a satin varnish, so you need to use a satin varnish again. Uh, and you can see we're getting a bit of reflection because the, uh, the varnish is still wet. But when that dries, it will now disguise that glue whiting really effectively. Here's another one on the deck. And as it's the deck, this needs to be a matte varnish. And as you can see, a nice simple application of varnish hides that really effectively. I've also added a couple of other things to the stand. I've added this builder's mark right at the aft. Clearly the, uh, the name label in the middle. And I've also added a nice pile of chain at the front, just because I had it lying around and I thought it suited the sort of dockyard appearance. Now I've also added two other figures to the model stand right at the base of the keel blocks, um, right where the weight of the ship would have pressed down into the dock. Um, and I've done this um, a bit like with the figures up on the actual model itself, just to sort of again convey that massive scale. Um, and the idea, this is taken from a, a famous photo of Bruce Ismay and, and Lord Perry walking around uh, the dockyard at Harland and Wolf. Um, I think they're walking around the, um, the Hull of Olympic. Um, but it's a very striking photo and it conveys the size of these ships. So it's something I was quite keen to try to recreate on my own stand. So, with that, the modelling is complete. And in fact, the model is now totally finished. So it's taken me, in all about three years to get this model done. So it's taken me longer than it took Holland and Wolf to build the actual Titanic. Um, now, the next video will be the ship's maiden voyage. Uh, I have already taken the ship to the lake and done a sort of like, sea trials, for want of a better word, and it worked very well, um, but I hadn't quite finished all of the details, so it wasn't completely 
finished. So quite in keeping with how the real Titanic sea trials were, I suppose. Um, so yeah, next video will be the maiden voyage. Fingers crossed nothing goes wrong. But this ship can't sink. She's made of polystyrene, sir. I assure you she can. Anyway, uh, as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you do have any questions, comments, whatever, you pop them down below and I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. If you've enjoyed the video, do please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.